Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, this is my January book review video. I wasn't sure if I was going to keep doing book reviews because I did it all last year and then I was like, eh, do I do it, do I not? But I really enjoyed just sitting down and talking about what I've read and I've also decided that I might, I'll see how I go on when I'm doing this video, but at the end of each review, book review video I might do a little just like overall month review and just tell you how my month went on for that for that time and just have it so it's kind of more like just a review video of the month instead of just books. I don't know, I want to see how I feel. But for January I did read uh, six books. Um, usually I write notes down on bits of paper but I actually start doing it on my phone because I'm trying to be more eco-friendly. So we're going to go through. Um, some of these I can remember, some of them I can't. So the first one I read was Coming Home to Maple Cottage by Holly, Holly Martin. Um, Isla Rosewood is creating new life for herself and her sweet nephew Elliot in a cosy yellow brick family cottage, brimming with special memories. Living in Sandcastle Bay was never part of Isla's, Isla's plan, but after her brother Matthew's tragic accident, her whole world changed as she unexpectedly became a mother to the little boy she adored so much. Leo Jackson was always known as Matthew's fun-loving and wild best friend, but now Matthew is gone, it's time to put his colourful past behind him. His role as Elliot's godfather is godfather is the most important thing to him and even though Leo and Isla are very two different people they both want to give Elliot the child who he um, deserves. So basically if I, this book just completely reminded me of the film Life As We Know It. Um, it's got Gaff Catherine he Heagle in it I think. Heigl? Heigl? I don't know how it was. Um, but yeah so it's, it basically reminds me that they have to um, parents die, they have to look after the kid basically and they fall in love. That's literally the summary of this book. Um, so Isla's um, becomes a guardian for uh, Elliot, best friend Leo helps him, helps look after because his godfather and he gets along with Elliot, they fall in love. Um, Elliot's mum Sadie t returns him a picture but she doesn't care about Elliot at all, she just wants the house and there's just a bit of drama in it and at the end it's a happy, it's a happy family. It's a, just, it's a general romance novel really, something happens, a bit of drama, a bit of dramatic and then fall in love at the end basically. Um, it is a good romance, but though it's a good happy feeling one. It has a little, I said, a little bit of drama in there, but you've it, it's a good one. I recommend it. I think I get, I think I'd rate it like seven out of ten because out of romance novels I've read, like these sort of things, this is one of the better ones. But I did the whole time I kept thinking this just reminds me of life as we know it so much. So that's the first one. The next one I read was this one. Which one? This one's terrible. Like wasn't brilliant. So this one's called Never Bite a Boy on the First Date by Tamara Summers. So obviously this is for teenagers. Um, when we found the guy and saw the holes in his neck, the cause of death was obvious. It wasn't me, I said. I make one mistake and suddenly every little vampire attack is my fault. That's so unfair. But it doesn't matter how much I protest. Unless I can prove my innocence, I'll be spending the next decade in a padded coffin. So now I'm on a mission to track down the real murderer. I've narrowed it down to three suspects. All acting suspiciously, all boys and all very cute. So basically the girl, the main girl, Kira, is being blamed for the vampire attack. She's got a pretend brother called Zack who she actually turned. He was her boyfriend, he nearly killed himself and she turned him into a vampire. Um, she now avoids him because she can't stand him. She, um, so Kira investigates the murder. There's Milo, Rowan and Daniel and she basically dates all three of them. Um, it turns out that Rowan found the body of the like kid, the dead person first and took photos of the but he isn't the one that was the killer. He did, however, kill Kira, the vampire, because she got in, hit in a run and that's how she died and he was the one that actually hit her and did the hit and run. So she learns that. Um, you find out who the killer is. It's kind of like after a while it gets a bit obvious to who the killer is, but it wasn't a bad book, but it wasn't brilliantly written either and I, I just, I wasn't fussed with this one. I love vampire books, but this one was, I was a bit like, eh kind of thing. This is like a 4 out of 10 I'd say, it wasn't the best. Okay, then the next one I read was Haunted Mansion Volume 2 Midnight at Mad Madame Leotis. This is, I love the Haunted Mansion books, I'm, I've am i only read the f first one but I loved it and this one I loved it. So it's a story within the story. So you've got the Haunted Mansion, um, Unhappy Returns, it's all about William basically. William's sister has died and he's trying to communicate with her. He feels guilty about how, how, how she dies. And basically you find out that his sister is actually Willa, who died in the first Haunted Mansion. 
So you've got different ones that says like, please, there's one called Please Remain Seated and the carnival's in town and it's all about friends Jane and Connie. Jane is a pretty one and Connie gets really like, is jealous because Jane's a pretty one. And something happens to Connie. Then there's one called Blood Relatives and it's about a little boy Ernie who learns he is related to a count which is a vampire. And um, the vampire basically leaves to go live at the mansion basically. And um, then there's Unc Uncle Rory's Late Show, um, Uncle Rory dies, and the ghosts of the movies are actually acting. Um, and the film is real, and something happens in that. Then you've got one called The Roaches, which I like this one, I was a bit like, ooh. Um, it's a hotel, and it's got roaches in the wall, and the little girl is mute, she doesn't talk, but after her parents' death, and she hears the roaches, and then they just attack her, and apparently you can still hear her screams today. It's a very good little, it's a good book, I really enjoyed it and I've seen it, There's a, I saw on Amazon the other day, there's a third one so I can't wait to get that, but I really recommend it, I love it, it's a very good little easy to read, I mean like easy to read book, but 9 out of 10, I really enjoyed this one. Okay, the next one is called The Spellgrinder's Apprentice by N. M. Brown. Um, an orphaned boy runs away from the dark cellar where he is apprenticed to grind spellstones which can be shaped to wield great magical power. His escape from this shadowy world is punishable with death, but this doesn't explain why the most powerful man on the island, a man as dangerous and unstable as the spellstones themselves, is hunting the boy. He will go to any lengths to capture him, but that is the worst but that is the worst thing he could do. Enter a world of magic and betrayal and is brilliantly clever and then realise an adventure. Um what happened this one? So the boy is called Tomo and he runs away from being an apprentice. He gets caught and is threatened to be hung and then he escapes again. He um, gets told that if he escapes off of like, this area he can live but if he's only got a certain amount of time to do it. He meets a girl called Akina um, and he has some and what the spell, the spell grinders like apprentices call the shivers because after a while they start to shake and they just then die from it. They just because they can't eat and drink and that kind of stuff they end up dying. Um, Akina and Tomo travel together, they may face many things. There's something to do with birds which have faces and they begin to follow them and help them out a little bit and the birds are of essence of Gilda. Gilda is like the like high priest kind of guy that got captured that everyone thought was like dead but actually got captured. Um, they need to gather all the birds to defeat the protector and then it's, it's basically, that's all I'm going to say really without telling you too much. It's a good again like teenage book. Um, I actually quite enjoyed that. At part times I did get a bit bored, but overall it was an alright book, so yeah. Um I'd say six, maybe seven out of ten. Okay. This one, haha. Talking with Psychopaths and Savages, Beyond Evil, a deeper journey into the minds of most cold blood killers by Christopher Berry D. Um this time he combines sections on killers whom he has known, interviewed or corresponded with, with studies of psychopathic path, kit, serial killers from the past. The result is chilling narrative that sets the forensics examination of killers and their crimes within the context of murder in the 20th and 21st centuries, an examination of the evil mindset against the insoluble problem of identify, identifying psychopaths who kill. So I've read the talking with serial killer one and I absolutely loved it, I know what I mean, I loved it, and this one tape took me a bit long to read but I really did enjoy it. So it's basically, it starts off with like how to like interview a serial killer, what it's like to interview a killer, serial killer, the different types of serial killers, and then it tells you a few. So it's like Peter C Curtin, who was a, like basically like Germany's vampire he was, he like used to like suck the blood from them and everything, he did at least 79 killings. Then there was Neville Heath, who was UK, from the UK, an RAF officer, he only killed two people, but it was more, you were reading more about what was going on for his mind instead of the actual amount of people that he killed. Um, there was David Russell Williams who was a colonel in um, the Canadian Air Force and he used to steal and wear ladies underwear, he used to take photographs um, of himself doing it and again he only killed a couple but they they think he was linked to like number of um, rapes as well. He'd like break into the houses and kill him and everything and then like record himself doing stuff to all the bodies. Then there's like Jodie Ann who killed one, it was only one person she killed and it was her bo like her ex-boyfriend and again the, like she made it, she left the evidence there and got caught like straight away she left photographs and everything of her doing stuff to her body. Then it was Douglas and um, Bundy which is an interesting case because Douglas kind of seems like innocent because it was mainly this Carol Bundy doing most of the stuff 
and she like tries to put the blame on Douglas, Douglas Clark. However, when you read it and that, you're like, he seems innocent with some of the stuff that she was claiming, but not all of it. Like, he, some of it he participated in, some of it he was like witness, not witness to the crime, yet he didn't do anything. So he wasn't fully innocent, but like he's claiming he is, but he was innocent in some of the parts, some of the deaths. Some of them he didn't even know about. He wasn't even like in the area at the time when they were carried out and it was all just Carol Bundy. But it's just so interesting, like the things that they say, so like, this one from Peter Curtin. After my head has been chopped off, will I still be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from my neck? That would be the best pleasure to end all pleasures. But it's just like, it's just the things they say. And I can't get over it. Like, it's just fascinating. I'm like, why do people, like, it's fascinating to, like, get into the minds of these people. And I love these books. And he's got a few more out that I'm going to try and get. So I highly, this one's 10 out of 10 if you love this sort of stuff. Like, I highly recommend Christopher Berry if you love like serial killers and psychopaths and murderers and that kind of stuff and you love getting in the mind of it and all that. And then the last one I read is Sunshine at the Comfort Food Cafe by Debbie Johnson. My name is Willow Longville. I live in a village called Budbury on the stunning Dorset coast with my mum Linny, who sometimes forgets who I am. I am a waitress at the Comfort Food Cafe, which is really so much more than a cafe, it's my home. For Willow, the ramshackle cafe overlooking the beach together with its warm-hearted community offers friendship as a daily special and always has a hearty welcome on the menu. But when a handsome stranger blows in on a warm spring breeze, Willow soon realises that a quiet country life will change forever. So again, so Willow is a cleaner and a waitress. Um, she used to live at a place called Brywood and it was like an orphanage thing and uh, her like mum used to help out there and everything. Um, she got hired to clean it ready for its new owner who turns out to be the handsome stranger. Um, it's really weird because the handsome stranger actually met her ages ago when she when he was a kid he was there as an orphan and she got told he was a ghost and she like freaked out when she first met him and they basically fall in love. Um, but she's got siblings who aren't really around, but then they come around, and her mo it's just like loads of, it's a lot of drama, it's her, it's a lot like, it's a lot of her discovering herself, because she's very close, she doesn't accept help with her mum, and it's a very, this one I really like, like these sort of romance ones, like this one, is just romance, romance, romance kind of thing, it's, you know the story like in the first chapter or two, but this one, had a bit more of a roller coaster, and it was not so much about the romance than the character development. Like, she really does develop. She learns to let people in, and it takes her time. She realizes that she needs help with her mum, and there's a lot of her accepting help looking after her mum than it is her finding romance. And it's like a connection with her siblings as well. Like, I really enjoyed this one. So, I think this one's probably it though, like a seven and a half, maybe an eight out of ten. But there you go. That's the books I read. Hopefully I didn't talk too long this time. Um, if there's any books you recommend me reading, let me know in the comments below and I will check them out. I'm always looking for new books, even though I have a whole shelf of books to read. I'm always thinking, hmm, what else can I get? Where else, what can, else can I read? So, let me know. And January, let's do a little bit of a January review, because why not? January's been a pretty good month for me, actually. Um, I haven't been to the gym as much as I've hoped. I think I've gone five times out of 31 days in January, but oh well. Um, I learned about some medical stuff that I've got. Um, I've got like mild scolius, 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 whatever it's called, with your back, so my back is a little bit more bent, which affects, which causes me pain every now and then. Um, so I've got, ex I've got physio exercises for that. And yeah, I've just been working really this month. I've that's pretty much it really. I've literally just been working. My sister got me a really nice surprise. She brought me a book of cat photos with catnip and she also got me a personalised necklace with my cat's name on it, Wiggles, and then a like a picture of the cat on it as well engraved and it's beautiful and I absolutely love it. Um, I got to see a fox as well, that was one of my highlights, as silly as it is, driving to work one evening, this huge fox ran across the road and it was so pretty and that was like one of my January highlights. But overall it's been a good month and I'm looking forward for February because I get to go on holiday. But yeah, so thanks for watching, um, like I said, let me know in the comments below if there's any books you want me to read, how was your January, was it a good one for you, was it a bit depressed, I know January's can be quite down for people, and what are you looking forward to for February? Let me know. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe, but our videos twice a week, Wednesdays and Sundays, and that's everything I got to say. I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever the time days. I hope you're happy and smiling, because that's the most important thing, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!